Murfreesboro and Rutherford County are so rich in their respective histories with many women who've had integral roles in creating our community's sense of place. The Rutherford Arts Alliance is proud to partner with Murfreesboro City TV to showcase a number of these women as a part of our Leading Ladies of Rutherford County History project. From murals to our community-involved play, A Party of Twelve by Mary Donay Johnson, we're proud to honor these diverse women of our past who inspire us as we give them a voice in today's world. Let's find out more about one of these leading ladies. Imagine being a spy during the Civil War. That's just what another leading lady, Mary Kate Patterson, did. Patterson was a Confederate spy serving on a number of assignments where she smuggled supplies and messages to scouts via her buggy's false bottom. Considered her most famous mission as a request from Sam Davis, she was told to get items in Nashville for Confederate General Braxton Bragg. We find out more about Patterson's life from her descendant, Gilbert Gordon, and his wife, Jenny. We want to chat about your relative on your mother's side, Mary Kate Patterson, who was quite a character, it sounds like, and very um, related to things in the north end of our county, um, connected by marriage to the Sam Davis home, and also in the Laverne area. So. Tell me a little bit about Mary Kate Patterson and what the family stories are there. Well, because she was raised around Laverne, and um, she is known even today as one of the most famous female uh, Confederate spies. We have coloring books, and her name is in there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of neat. You mean, open these? These are sold all over the place, all over the country, and her name is in there and talks about her. Um, she was my mother's great, great aunt. And what's interesting to me is my mother remembers her. Wow. My mother was born in 1922 and she died in 19, and Aunt Kate died in 1931. My mother was eight or nine years old and she remembers her vividly. Mm -hmm. She remembers one story that I don't think anybody would know, but um, when Aunt Kate got older, she would just live with whomever she could find to live with and with family members. Mm -hmm. And so she would either write a letter or call whatever and she'd say, um, uh, anything going on in your home, I'd like to come stay with And she'd stay for a month or two. So it kind of got the thing, of, where is Aunt Kate going to be next? So she wrote uh, my grandmother and said, I'm headed that way, you know, I'm, you got time. And, all, you know, and my grandmother wrote back and said, oh, this is not a good time because our children have the measles. So four children all had the measles, and was your grandmother, My grandmother didn't, was a, wid a widow A widow, a widow. Part of it was because they had the measles. Part of it was because they just didn't need Aunt Kate around. <laughs> <laughs> she could be difficult. <laughs> yes. So um, anyway, a couple of weeks later, knock, knock at the door, and grandmother opens it, and there's Aunt Kate. <laughs> She said, oh, well, I sent you a letter that uh, the children have the measles. We thought it wouldn't be a good time for you to be here. And she said, oh, I got your letter, but don't worry about it. I've already had the measles, <laughs> right. so I won't get sick. So she kind of missed a little bit of the, <laughs> the hint. <laughs> but uh, Aunt Kate, as she got older, there are stories about her. Uh, always ca she carried pistols under her petticoat at all times, even to the right to the end of her life. Mm -hmm. And towards the end also, they, and I don't know if this was a basement or under the house, but she would sleep under the house in fear of Union soldiers coming to get her. Because as she ran these messages back and forth across the line, which is a very dangerous thing, um, she encountered all these fears. Uh, Sam Davis, she says, Aunt Kate said that she gave Sam Davis the boots that were later gonna be cut open by the Union and find the message inside that made him out to be uh, the spy that he was. Mm -hmm. He was hanged in Columbia, and according to Aunt Kate, 
she was the one who went there and picked up his body and brought him back. Mm -hmm. Now, we have not found authorities to uh, agree to that, but we know it's true mm -hmm. because Aunt Kate would not tell a lie. Well, there you go. And she was married to, to Sam's brother. brother. Okay. So she married so she Sam's John brother. Davis, I believe. Entourage, who, however many people. So her, mm -hmm. her name is Mary Kate Patterson, and then Davis, which whom she outlived, and then she married Hill, and she outlived, and then she married a Kyle, and she outlived him. So she was wow. she outlived all of her husbands. Mm -hmm. But my mother remembers her well. How about mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure as a young teenager during the Civil War, mm. um, evidently she was she had a quite a presence about her, yes. mm -hmm. very yes. gregarious mm -hmm. and... Mm -hmm. um, well, so I think we, even those things get passed down because my mother is very much like that. I, and when I was writing about my mother, she was, I started out saying my mother was a rebel. Mm. And she very much was a rebel. Um, her mother was very much a rebel and it just kind of goes down through, and I don't know if that's a genetic thing or an expectation, but and a rebel in a good way. I was going to say, you're not Strong, thinking of no. rebel versus rebel versus the union. Oh, you're no, talking no. about no. a person who is not going to just do the normal no, don't thing. Status quo. Yeah, not so status live, quo. Uh, you know, above and beyond character-wise, yeah. their circumstances to live beyond what the circumstance dictates, mm -hmm. you know, your inner person, your character can live above those. Yeah, and that's my, certainly what your mother was and yeah, your grandmother. My grandmother, yes. who's, they, her, their, their home burned, her, her husband died and at an early age and she raised three girls and a special, uh, needs. A special needs brother who didn't so, live very long. So, so. And mm -hmm. she taught school at Kingwood to uh, raise their children. She had the first hot lunch program and she would just, there, all the kids would come and she'd put all this, this boiling, this warm water on the, uh, the stove and they'd just put their things over in it. And that was the, the, she claimed the first hot lunch program. Mm -hmm. But she was a teacher too. Yeah. She was she a teacher, taught her, but she fed them stove, yeah. you know, oh. Just the stove that was in the middle of the mm -hmm. school room. She would bring a big pot. Mm -hmm. And it's a one room school. Mm -hmm. And she taught in this one room school. And she was a. I, I remember her very well. Uh, she would take me to football practice, and she wasn't. She wasn't a warm, warm kind of person. But when I would go to visit her, her mother lived. She was actually caring for her own mother, Nanny. Mm -hmm. And Nanny was a trip on her own. Uh, Nanny never lost a game of solitaire. As my grandmother said, she cheated every time, but that's just the way it was. So I knew her real well, so I would go and spend time with my grandmother and my great-grandmother. Mm -hmm. And then my mother came along and life wasn't easy for her. It mm -hmm. was difficult, and yet my mother always had a positive outlook. Mm -hmm. she, could, she could take the worst situation and mm -hmm. turn it around and make it into just something real special. <laughs> And so that was Catherine was the Great. Catherine, oh, Catherine the Great. Catherine the Great. Yes. She had a humor that was so dry and could just turn any situation just by a one-liner, just to put a zing in there. Just a brilliant woman, not educated in the sense that we speak of education, but truly an intelligent woman. She could quote poetry for 30 minutes at a time without stopping. The barefoot boy, the, the schoolhouse with uh, the village, uh, the village, the village blacksmith. Mm -hmm. So there were, I don't know, qualities again of that sustenance, that substance of a woman. Now whether that was part of Aunt Kate, I don't know, or just you know, that got passed down. But it yeah. definitely had a stalwart character. So what? And so your book is divided, and the, tell me the name, name of the book. And your book is divided between one side of the family, and then Mary Kate Patterson's well, on the other side. It's called Ramblings on Rock Springs Road, and it's really about the road itself. 
Uh, so it's, it starts out talking about way back with John Hilton. It's, the first chapter is all about just setting it. The whole book is about heroes mm -hmm. in my life that I knew. So it, it's only the first chapter that even talks about all the history. But I wanted to bring all of that so that people could just get a feel for um, how... A place. A, a place, place, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so the, then the chapter that starts with my grandfather, who had a huge impact, then it's my grandfather, then it's my father, then my mother, then my siblings, then neighbors. So the whole thing is just one. It's all about these people who, I, on this road I lived along, and how, what the, uh, the impact they had on my life. Mm -hmm. That's what the whole book is. And then I go away to college, and that's when it ends on part one. Then part two is when I, from there on out, and meeting Jenny to the end of coming back home and all that. We went to New York for several years. But the whole book is just in honoring people. And these are people no one knows. No one will ever know these people. And part of what I wanted to do, I hope to, what I hope would happen, other people would read it and say, you know, I have those people in my life. I think I'll sit down and write down mm -hmm. about those people who no one will remember, but they were important. And if people just start remembering the people who are important to them and what they, how they impacted their lives, mm -hmm. That's a that's that's kind of a that's a history in itself. Mm -hmm. Like some of these people aren't related to me, but they're still part of who I am. They made me who I am, for better or for worse. So that's really what the, the whole book is about. So it's mm -hmm. it starts out with history, it immediately goes into all of these people, but it's also about the uh, the farming um, that it, that happened there. It's, it, it's about community. It's about relationships, and it's not. It's not Pollyanna. I mean, there are hard things that happen in our mm -hmm. families, and there's some difficult things that happen in our neighbors' families. And I remember when, when this one dear friend of mine, I said some things about his family that, I said some things about our family that offended my sisters. And so I, I took that out. But it, it was what I felt was true. And so I said some things about in other families, and I had one, this one man came to me and he gave me a hug and he said, thank you for telling the story of our family. And there were things in there that weren't good. I mean, they were hard things. So although these people are heroes, they're not, they're not superheroes. Mm -hmm. They're just people. Mm -hmm. And they're, they have as much on the negative as the positive, but they're still, it doesn't mean we love them any less. We love them just the more. They're just human. We're all frail parts of humanity, mm -hmm. but I respect and honor those people, and I wanted other people to know these, the people that I love and respect and honor. And that was the whole point of the book, mm -hmm. really. So it's not so much historical, it is that, but it's more about the people themselves and the conversations and the things I learned, that, that I can still remember their voices and the things, I can still remember my, my grandfather, the, acres we'd walk over and the fishing that we did together and just it's that kind of thing mm -hmm. that was special to me and I think that's why that man said thank you for reminding me of the things I never had and I never thought about it I thought everybody had that mm -hmm. and so what's been interesting about it the people have responded back like what's been the response it's been such a it's hard to mm -hmm. put into words what mm -hmm. it's like I didn't think anybody would read it <laughs> I only wrote it for my three sisters and my brother. That's the only, that's it. But it seemed, for some reason, everybody have, they've kind of... They identify with yeah, it. Yeah, they identify with it. Whether it was their own grandparents or an elderly neighbor or an aunt who stood in. I think the, the voice of community that comes out in this book, we think we've kind of lost it, right? Because we're not a small town anymore. Murfreesboro is not a small little town. Christiana is not just a country, you know, bump in the road. It's not, but yet there were, back then, there was no choice. Your community was your community. You had to learn to get along. But we still have choices in our community today. So who are the people that influence you? Who are the people, the teachers or the next door neighbors or the cousins that impact that you do community with and celebrate those. You know, instead of being here on screen in some form, mm. celebrate these incredible people 
that are in our lives that have given so much to help make who we are. And we're hopefully doing the same for others too, so. And I think that's very much what the Leading Ladies Project mm -hmm. has been about giving voice to these people that were not necessarily famous in any mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. They represented a part of the population that, you know, everyone has a place in a community mm -hmm. that make it part of the place it is. Mm -hmm. And it's not just um, those that have some kind of statewide office or exactly. national office or so forth. I mean, those are important, but the everyday people are important mm -hmm. too. Absolutely. And I think um, giving, getting the families to tell us about these women, such as Mary Kate, mm -hmm. um, and what they were like as a young person, but having the family connections to remember mm -hmm. what they were like as an older person. Some of those traits were still there. Mm -hmm. You know, some of that fear of what she had mm -hmm. um, during the war mm -hmm. was still there mm -hmm. as an elderly person, but mm -hmm. she had a lot of gumption about her to mm -hmm. reach out and say, mm -hmm. I've got to have some place to live, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. right. You know, right. measles or not. Right. No. <laughs> so yeah. you really started writing just for family. Strictly, yeah. And then I think sharing it is, um, is part of the, of the Leading Ladies Project too, is trying mm -hmm. to share some of these family things mm -hmm. or friends of a family with the things that are well-researched and written or the things that are owned. I know Mary Kate Patterson has a historical marker mm -hmm. um, in the county. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, there weren't very many women, mm -hmm. even today, mm -hmm. that have historical markers. Mm -hmm. And uh, many, many of the ones that are being featured with this uh, Leading Ladies Project do have them. Or, um, and, and some are, again, not uh, not major players in the thing, but they were major. They were major influencers around their group. She must have been close enough to Nashville that she could ride over there in a buggy. Yeah, didn't she, she have a buggy that mm -hmm. had a, mm -hmm. a false, false bottom? bottom? Mm -hmm. Now tell me about I that. Heard. Just remember the story. I, I don't. I don't, I don't I've somehow never heard that, that that might have been where I've she read was. It, mm -hmm. but taking some of those boots or, mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. um, that just read there that was something know. put in the bottom of her carriage mm -hmm. or her mm -hmm. buggy mm -hmm. so that they could put, you know, and I'm sure she was sitting in there primly on it with her shoes right. and uh, right. nobody would think about saying what's under there. Right, right. that's true. Well, I th you know, I think with, uh, there's two ways of looking at the history of these of the people. One of it's very accurate historically and I never even pretend to do that. But the other side is what I'm interested in. It's the, pe the people and the stories and the heart of it all. That's what interested me. So even this, mm -hmm. I said, no one should quote anything I say. I mean, I, I go out and say, oh, this is the way it should be because I enjoy folklore much more than truth. You know, and so it's, this is a book about people. No one would ever look at this and dig through it to get any accurate information. That wasn't even the point of it, and I just—it's about the people, and who they were to to me. Mm -hmm. I think that's and the connections are kind of interesting, mm -hmm. you know, all that. Mm -hmm. But that's that—I'm not a historian yeah, at all. And Jenny, even though you grew up in Nashville and your family's been there, um, you also have a connection here in Rutherford County mm -hmm. with the Women's Club. Uh, building. Right. Now, mm -hmm. tell us about um, how that... So my great-grandfather was James Monroe Haynes, who owned a lot of the property just on the north side of Murfreesboro, which is where the old Reeves Sane drugstore mm -hmm. all out there. There were the Kroger Across and the... Memorial. Mm -hmm. to the, the upper west. side of Memorial, mm -hmm. so where the post office is on Memorial. So he my great-grandfather, this still kills me every time I say this, was born in 1818. My great-grandfather. So we 
got about three generations in there because he married a woman 29 years his younger. Mm -hmm. So my great-grandmother was 29 years younger than he was. So he actually, unfortunately, had slaves. They went through the Civil War and then um, my grandmother was born when he was in his 60s. So as he aged, he owned the Haynes Hotel, which is, was right off of, do you know what road that was? No. Near where, what I call J.C. Penney, where Penney's was on the corner. I've forgotten my streets. Which would be College Street okay. and... Um, so near no. Marina's. Mm -hmm. So from my understanding, great-grandfather Haynes okay. had the way scales that where marinas is now and his hotel was right across the street or somewhere right in that area and but he lived outside of town which was what a half a mile was considered mm -hmm. outside of town um, on memorial his in house in town house was what became the women's club and so from what I know, that his health would deter was deteriorating as he aged, so he put the porches on the women's club. So the arches around there was for so that he would be able to walk in the afternoons in the cool of the porches. Mm -hmm. um, so he just walked around that house on the porches, and then he ended up retiring and moving to Florida in his later years, because we have a couple of letters from him to my grandmother um, urging her to live a moral and upright and Christian life. So it's a beautiful letter that he wrote. Mm. So he was, um, a, you know, a prominent early citizen, Murfreesboro history. I don't know his character except through that letter, but it speaks a lot of him. But he was, I guess, a businessman here and a successful businessman. Um, and we found that letter with the slave mm -hmm. We found, yeah, we found the, that was disturbing. When my aunt passed, we were going through files and we found the letter where he was, you know, selling a young African-American girl to another, you know, farm owner here in Murfreesboro. And it just, it just gets all over you, you know, it really does. Uh, I think that was in, 1842 when he sold that. Now, how many slaves he had or whatever, I don't know, but. Well, I think it's interesting that some of our homes mm -hmm. that uh, have still been kept mm -hmm. during the years mm -hmm. and still used, mm -hmm. and again, with all the activities that that club has done for mm -hmm. our community, mm -hmm. Um, that we still have a lot of our history in our homes, mm -hmm. even though the people who live there mm -hmm. or have been members of that organization mm -hmm. have moved, we still have a symbol of that time period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we still have people that have family connections mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. So lots of uh, historic things. And I think it's important we've kept those, but I mm -hmm. think it's important too that we hear the the stories behind them mm -hmm. many times. One of, on my mother's side, she, her name is Carney Overall. So she's from the Carneys and the Overalls of Murfreesboro. But my fifth great grandfather is Captain William Lytle, who gave supposedly the original land for Murfreesboro. But his son, one thing that we really just love in our family is an oil portrait that was done of his son, Major John Lytle. It's in my mother's home now. And supposedly during the Civil War, there was a saber slash through the portrait. And there was a slash. My grandfather told this story to us many times. His aunt was Jenny Mitchell, who lived right here on Main Street. He was, she was married to Sam Mitchell, who was a Confederate soldier. My mother, as a young child, she remembers um, Aunt Jenny and Uncle Sam here on Main Street. They would come to visit, and he would tell her Confederate, you know, 
Civil War stories. And so the portrait hung right above their fireplace. And so thankfully, it has stayed in the family. My mother has that now. So it's, it's a really special connection with here. Even though I was raised in Nashville, none of us, you know, none of my immediate family live here except for me. But that there is a definite connection here. So it makes me feel more grounded here, I think, that mm -hmm. both sides of my family are from here. But the portrait is beautiful. This man has the most gracious and, I don't know how you would say it, very pleasant face. Um, it's kind of someone that you want to grow up and be like, you mm -hmm. know, just his, his bearing about him. So hopefully one day if, if Murfreesboro gets a true museum, maybe the family would be able to let them borrow the painting because it's beautiful. It's just, it's a wonderful connection. So. Well, and we're certainly looking forward yeah. to a, a Rutherford County Museum yes, in yes. a historic I hope courthouse. So. I hope so. So to um, wrap up today, mm -hmm. What made you want to participate in a project like this? I mean, what, what lessons do we have to be learned, do you think, from people from our past and the stories from our past? What are you hoping that people get from books and stories and looking at a portrait mm. of people that aren't in their family, for mm -hmm. example? I think for me, it was for me. It wasn't so much, I, mean, I really want people to know these, but for some reason that I cannot explain, it's just important for me to know where I came from. Mm -hmm. And I, sometimes you wonder who we are, if we're not, we're, are we just nothing but all of these other people combined? Mm -hmm. And so that's, it was just important for me Really, just for us. It was just for me, uh, but I, I do want them to know other. But I don't mm -hmm. know what you would think. Jenny. I think what comes to mind is that we want to honor people, whether they're living or not. As you give honor to someone's memory, or honor to your grandparent, or someone who stood in for you as a grandparent mm -hmm. figure, there's something that builds within yourself. There's an honor within yourself that builds. At school, uh, when a teacher walks in the classroom, the students rise because they're giving honor and mm -hmm. respect to that person. Uh, we answer instead of, huh, we say, yes, ma'am, or no, sir. Well, that may be a Southern tradition, but part of that that we want to instill in them is giving honor and respect to others actually creates creates that within ourselves. And so I think as we honor these people in the past, or older people, or people that have, that we know that maybe aren't older, but have lived through a really hard time, and we mm. give them honor by lifting them up, it also impacts us too in our future. So that's what I see, that as you are bringing for these women and putting them at the forefront, the leading ladies. It brings honor to them, but it also can bring honor to the people who are learning about them. Mm -hmm. It makes them a fuller person. For more information about our project, Leading Ladies of Rutherford County History, visit our website, leadingladiesrutherford.com. Or if you have a story of someone from the past who inspired you, you can share it on our website. For more information about the Rutherford Arts Alliance and what we're doing to promote arts, culture, and heritage, visit rutherfordartsalliance.org. And thank you for watching.